Jonathan Abram is a very interesting player. And part of me wants to just kind of with every Raiders secondary player say, like, let's see what they do with a with different coaching, because clearly coaching was a huge issue last year in terms of their defense, not so much offense, but defense especially. So there is part of me that wants to do that. But there also are some, I think, fair critiques to talk about and just a lot of stuff to talk about. So let's get into it. So like right here, perfect example. It's quarters coverage. You see the route, you see the route that Abram is going to cover. You also see the zone Abram is supposed to cover. It's the one I've circled in white there, as opposed to all the other black circles. And it's going to be T.Y. Hilton. And the biggest thing that I have an issue with with Jonathan Abram is he just makes bad decisions. Like, that's really what it comes down to, is he needs to improve his decision-making drastically if he's going to be successful in the league. Because uh, the reality is, he just makes awful decisions right now. Like, watch, right when this play starts, uh, you notice how, I mean, look at this. He moves way far in. Again, this is T.Y. Hilton, the guy who is best known for being a deep threat. That's the number one thing he's known for. Even at this point in his career, that's what he's best known for. And you see that Abram started moving in, and now he's turned his hips completely towards the, the sideline, and I'm not really sure why. I mean, I guess I am sure why. It's because Hilton made a little move right there, but it just it goes to show, I mean, really getting fooled by the subtlest of moves that probably shouldn't happen. And this just, he's horribly out of position right now. It's going to be really difficult for him to come back from this at this spot. And as you see, Hilton just blows right by him and gives up a big, you know, he gave up a big touchdown right there and that's your job as a safety is to not give up the big touchdowns you can live with giving up a 10 yard play you don't want to obviously but you can live with it however you can't live with that and abram has made far too many of those types of mistakes part of me wants to be like i'm sure this has been mentioned to him he's probably just not you know learning as well but at the same time with paul gunther it seems like every single secondary player kept making the same mistakes over and over again, which leads me to believe it was probably more of a coaching thing, but still, it's an issue he has to fix. Like, we'll now move on to this play, because it's another example of just these kind of things where sometimes it's not always just an awful read, but it's just a read that you would hope a second year starting safety would know what to do. He would find a way to get over and cover somebody. And on this play, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, but still something he should learn how to do. So it's cover two this time. They played a lot of cover two, which typically makes things a little easier for a safety, but not uh, last year too much for Abram. It's going to be cover two, and you see the zone he's supposed to cover. And to be clear, I'm getting on him now. We're going to talk some positives in a minute, but you know, again, there weren't a ton of positives. I mean, Pro Football Focus rated Abram as the worst safety in the league last year, so that's not great. And a lot of it is mental, I think. But anyways, you see how this play works. There's only two receivers who are running deep routes on this play, meaning that you have two safeties, two receivers running deep. This is a kind of obvious, okay, you get who should cover who. But I will say the one kind of tricky aspect of this play is the fact that they're both currently on the offense's left, whereas Abram is the guy to the offense's right. So he's looking at the receivers who are on his side of the field, but the person he's supposed to end up covering is on the other side of the field. That can make things a little bit difficult. So I am throwing that in there. I want to be fair. However, watch how right when this play starts. I mean, you notice that right off the bat, there's two players, right? There's the guy in the blue circle, the guy in the yellow circle. If you're Jonathan Abram, who do you cover? You obviously do not cover the guy in the blue circle. He currently has two Raiders players already covering him. You don't need to triple team him. Cover the guy who is going into your section of the field where no one else is over there. No one else realizes this because they shouldn't have to go over there. This is Abram's guy, the guy in the yellow circle. However, he just, he doesn't notice it. As you see, he continues to go over and, I mean, leaves someone wide open, basically right where Abram started to play standing. That's just a mistake that can't happen. And it's the stuff like this where I'm like, okay, if he's making hard decisions not correctly, I'm going to be more forgiving just because like, and eh, that happens. When you make some dumb decisions, I usually get on to player. And when you consistently make dumb decisions, I get on to coaching. Because if you're consistently making these plays and you're getting good coaching and still consistently missing these plays, then you shouldn't play. Like that's really what it comes down to. I don't believe that's the case. I think it's more 
Paul Gunther just, I don't know what he was doing, quite frankly. I would love to, you know, be a fly on the wall because unless he just happened to be coaching the dumbest group of NFL players ever, I think a lot of it is coaching. So now let's talk about when he plays sort of in the box, which this is what I hear a lot of Raiders fans talk about. He's not the best coverage corner. He screws up on those plays like that, you know. You can't watch the Raiders and not realize that, yeah, okay, he's making those mistakes deep. He needs to clean it up. The thing about Abram, though, is I just don't know if he has the skill set to play in the box. I don't know if he has the skill set to play around the line of scrimmage. I kind of like him better as a free safety, actually. And the reason why is because if you're going to play uh, in the box and you're going to play around the line of scrimmage, you're probably going to have to play man coverage at times, which he's just not that great at. And this one's a good example where he's going up against the tight end and watch what happens. So right off the bat, Indianapolis's tight end gets the inside leverage, and Abram is in a bit of a tough situation. He's desperately trying to keep up. So right off the bat, first step, not the best, and that's something that I do feel is the case of Abram, is he doesn't cut that well. He moves in very well. Once he gets going, he, he you know he's like a bull, basically. That's actually, I think, a great way to describe him. He's a bull. He doesn't run direction to direction too well, but when he's running in a straight line, he's great. However, when you're playing man coverage like this, you kind of have to be able to have good footwork, which he, he just doesn't have that great of footwork. Watch this fake to right, go left, and I mean, Abram just is nowhere close when the ball is thrown. That's about as open as you get in the NFL, especially with a tight end. It just, Abram, that's just not where he shines, and that's fine. I don't need him to be a great man coverage player. Uh, you know, safety, that's fine. You can find other ways to make him work. I'd rather him be deep. And when he does have to play man, he has to do it very rarely. I, I don't want him to do it that much. Because like even something like this, you know, I know he hits hard, but just because you hit hard doesn't always mean that you, you're better off in the running game being close to the line of scrimmage. He's six feet tall, 205 pounds. He's not exactly a giant safety by any means. And this is a good example going up against a, a wide receiver right here in the blocking game. So this typically is a favorable matchup, safety versus wide receiver. But watch what happens. I mean, as you see, he's just going to get completely blocked out of the way on that one. I mean, he got thrown to the ground. That's not good. That's not what you want to see have happen. Uh, and that's kind of my thing is I like him better when he's further away and he can use that great straight line speed and how he can break in to his advantage as opposed to being put in this situation, which I actually think he's worse at. I think that that's the opposite kind of move I would want to see him make because he's fast enough to play free. I'd rather him play free than strong. I just would. Because like something like this, I have seen some flashes from Abram and this is a good example of it because again, also worth mentioning, he was basically a rookie last year. I mean, he was hurt his all his whole rookie season. So it's basically, he's basically a one-year player. But anyways, you see him as the free safety. This is going to be a rushing play and watch what he does. Watch. He's a little bit patient here, which I like. He needs to be more patient, if anything, but then runs over and does do a good job of helping get into the play. Not sure what it mattered, but I'm just using that as an example of, no, he can be effective in the uh, rushing game when he's a free safety, honestly better than when he's a strong safety. I want him back there. I want him running up to make tackles, not trying to shed blocks to make tackles. That's just where I would rather him be. And that's kind of my thought about Abram is like, I've seen some flashes. I have seen him make some good tackles and things like that. But at the same time, it, he needs to get better at coverage. And a big part of it is he just needs to be more patient and he needs to make better decisions. However, I do have some concerns. Even if you get the right coaching, how good is he? I just don't know. But I would like to see him with some better coaching and see if that is the issue. There is a chance. I'm not sure how big of a chance, but there is a chance that that is the only issue. So let's hope for that because, again, he's exciting to watch when he's not getting completely blown out of coverage. So hopefully things work out. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.